Dette handler om Barry, Robin og Morris. For 30 år siden så var det de tre hengslete tenåringer i Australia som nettopp hadde kommet med sin første single. I dag har de solgt 150 millioner plater. Og i musikkhistorien så er det bare Elvis, det er Michael Jackson, Paul McCartney og The Beatles som har hatt flere førsteplasser. Og hvis de nå klarer en eneste førsteplass til, så skriver de musikkhistorie. For ingen annen gruppe har klart å ha fire førsteplasser på fire ti år på rad. Og dette er brødrene Gibb. Og i hundre tusener av nordmenns platehyller så lyder de navnet The Bee Gees. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. We have just seen Paying the Price of Love. And tell me about all the effects. It was more like a movie for me. We wanted something this time that was going to be a little more groundbreaking. We'd never really been in the video arena. We'd never really competed at that, at that level. Uh, we're usually just records. And this time around we wanted to do something that was visually interesting as well. Mm. Eye candy. And expensive. Yeah. Expensive, and expensive indeed, yes. 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 The title, Paying the Price of Love. Yeah. But after being in the pop business now for mm. 30 years, what is paying the price paid, of success? We paid, we paid, we paid. <laughs> I think we in other words, there is, there is a, a certain price you pay, you pay, you sacrifice. Uh, although, I mean, there are certain sacrifices that other people would interpret as being sacrifices that we wouldn't. Uh, there's a per certain personal uh, side of your life that sacrificed it. Uh, my, my first marriage was probably uh, mm -hmm. ruined by it, but, uh, but I had two great kids from it, so... That was that was that was good. There's downsides uh, to, to all uh, long long careers. We lost our brother Andy five years ago, uh, 30 years old. It's a price more so that, that he really paid because of uh, mm -hmm. the conflicts that he had in his life. But also, it's a price we pay because it's um, it, because it was yes. part and parcel of our our life too. And we lost our father last year, uh, probably more due to the fact of, of what happened to Andy five years earlier. So it's it's all. All connected. There are there are ups and downs in, in everybody's lives, and I suppose uh, when you have a, a career like ours, you can have more than there's a fee that comes with it. There's a fee. Yeah. Mm. in the gossip columns. I don't think we're the kind of group that people would want to know too many, too many spicy things about. I think we're sort of mm. on the fringe of that. But I, I know what you mean by saying that, uh, I, that we are public domain, that people will tend to write about you when you do things, but just I, normal yeah, things. I think it's also uh, because of what we do. I mean, because of the business we're in, mm. it goes yeah. with the territory. No matter what you do, you can always do something really good, but people like to read bad stuff. They don't like to read good stuff about you. They always like yeah. to read the bad, so that sells more papers. So you will make the so-called tabloids, or um, in America it's called the Inquirer. There's these kind of papers that are out there, and they sell more than any other newspaper because it's pure, made-up of gossip. A lot of it's totally untrue, but people like to read it, you know, just for that moment while they're reading it, try to believe it. Mm. But it's not necessarily true, so it comes with the territory. I don't think you see much of us in gossip columns anyway. Mm. We're not that type of act, you know. Mm. There's, no, there's no scandals or, uh, or anything you would speak of that exists in our lives privately. It's only words. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, if you insist. <laughs> Thank you. It's only words. Children and family values are the most important thing for you now. Is that the reason why we've chosen a subject like the children of Bosnia and sing for them and help them and raise money? 
Well, we dedicated our song Blue Island. We wrote that, we wrote that for the children of Yugoslavia um, because we'd heard the stories about the spiritualists who, upon contacting the other side, uh, heard it described as a blue island. And we wanted to write a song about the fact that heaven might indeed be a blue island. And uh, it's our message to the children of Yugoslavia, or former Yugoslavia, uh, that, um, that, if, that, that at the end of everything else, even if worse comes to worse, we all meet together on a blue island at some time. And it's, it's a happy thought and a positive thought. And at some point, we'd like to do a concert for the, ch for the children of Yugoslavia. It's an optimistic song. It's a song yeah. about optimism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the question today is, how do you help the children of Yugoslavia? Because you can't get in there to help them. There should be some system set up where we can get all the children out. Let people fight, but get the children out of there first. At least put them someplace yeah. safe so they'll be OK yeah. until it's all over with. You know, but you see, all we can do is really make people aware of it. We can't do anything physically. It's not a fact of raising money. I think money, that's, a, that's an old adage about Well, well you can people. feed and, and clothe the ones yeah. that have escaped. Well, at least... But you can't get in yeah, there. It's, yeah. uh, and, and if, to help the people already in there, getting money in there is worthless. It just doesn't mean it. You never really know if it's where it's going anyway. Do you remember July of 67 in Very Oslo? Well. Yes. Yes. Do you remember <laughs> Oslo? <laughs> <laughs> the summer of Oslo, yeah. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We, um, yeah. we were um, up on a mountain at a recording at a, t at a studio doing a television show. Mm. Yeah. And you uh, performed the close another door. Oh, we also did Massachusetts, I think, yes. Yes. with a fishnet background, like a like a fishing boat, <laughs> like fishnet. Oh, oh, right. The Bee Gees. Many years have passed, it seems, and now I'm all alone. I've sent the children far away to some obscure alone. It's so sad, so sad.
you haven't been in Norway since. That's no, 26 we years. We were supposed to go on the last tour, but unfortunately the promoter, uh, the promotion that was going on in Scandinavian countries particularly wasn't very yeah. good. So uh, the next time we tour, we're definitely... But I, 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 I heard it was just simply a matter that we weren't selling tickets, and that mm. happens, you know. Um, we, 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 it wasn't well, that's what I meant by the promotion. I mean, yeah, but, that, but I think coming. it might be the same promotion <laughs> this time around. Though, so be... No, I mean, no, but <laughs> I don't know. The promotion yeah. was there. It wasn't there for us to come. But so. we should be definitely coming. Had, we been, had it been handled properly, it might have been better. Mm. But, uh, but we're coming this time no matter what. So, you know, we're, go we're, we're coming to play the Wolf. Ticket sales people. or no ticket sales, we're going. <laughs> Is it Melbourne or Australia as your home audience, or is that in Britain or in the States? We're, we're sort of, we're, we're, we're British, yeah. first off, but we were brought up in Australia, so it's a, it's a second home to us, and we do have an affinity with the Australian audiences. Um, a lot of our um, early years performing was, was all done in Australia, so a lot of our, a lot of our groundwork, um, learning about our craft, was done in Australia. Uh, but we've also spent many years in, in America, so we're sort of multicultural. We're not, yeah. we're not um, based in any particular area, but we're British-born, yeah. and, and, uh, and damn it, British will stay. It's, really good. Well put. It's, it's very hard. I mean, we like Australia, but we don't, it's, very, it's a very long way to go, and we don't get down there too much. Flight time. Flight yeah. time, 22 <laughs> hours. Very long. Uh, we're going to see, uh, well, Bee Gees goes unplugged in the medley. Right. And yes. Maurice, would oh, you... Yeah. Describe your brothers during work time on stage. On stage, actually, it's uh, once again mm. we we have a lot of fun. We don't um, uh, go out seriously. Uh, we we all have a great eye contact on stage. We all know what's going on. Um, Robin can be a bit moody, which is Rob, uh, a bit pensive, uh, thoughtful. but it's thoughtful. Yeah, and um, we're also mad perfectionists. You know, it's like on stage, if the balance isn't right and the monitors and things like that, it's like, it gets a little awkward. But uh, other than that, I think uh, going on stage, as in, as in making records, as in writing the songs, we all have the same kind of chemistry that, that mixes. So on stage, it's the same thing. The only difference is you're seeing the people who put you up there, which is, it's a great way of saying thank you. And that's a, that's a wonderful experience as well. So the three of us together have, all have the same kind of thoughts. I do notice sometimes when uh, Barry used to have terrible back pain on stage and he covered it really well, but I could see an eye contact where he'd go, God, I'm in agony, but it still carried on with the show. Yeah. But now, you know, he's taking care now of that now. He just turns so his back on the audience and drops his trousers. <laughs> 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 it works. It's but a relief. It's a relief. It what what I'm saying is I noticed that his dedication is not to let the show down because of the pain he was going through. We carry him up in a bucket at the end of the show. <laughs> I think a lot, a lot of times the, the artist can dictate what, 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 the, what the people want, and certain certain uh, respect, uh, radio does as well. The I think to some degree that the public are actually starved of the kind of things they really want, mm. and not given what they want. Sometimes artists have to push forward and give and show and and, and come up with the, with the actual uh, product that people are actually yeah. demanding. Our movies are being force fed to people now, and, and music is force fed. Uh, so the audience doesn't really have a choice about what they hear, what they see as a movie, or what they listen to as music. Yeah. So we're, um, we're not on that bandwagon. That we're just making this album was just for us. We're making this album out of fun, out of what we like. We're and getting it, a very good yeah, reaction yeah. to the album by, 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 yeah. by radio and, and the media. But yeah. what we feel today is that a lot of people, and the reason we're probably getting a great reaction from radio, especially the initial reaction to radio in the UK, has been fantastic. And I think one of the reasons the good reaction is there is because a lot of the, the there's a, a lot of the sales on singles and albums right now are very very low indeed, and uh, I think this demonstrates that people are tired of buying the stable diet of all rap and heavy metal. That's fine. I like heavy metal and I like and I like rap, but 
it's too one-dimensional. You can't just expect the kids and, and the public just to want one kind of music all the time. And pop music was never that way. Popular music was never that way. It was always a cauldron of different cultures into one. That was the whole foundations mm. of popular music. And I think people are missing that. To love somebody, to love somebody. Wish you were here in memory of your deceased brother Andy. And in this concert, you have dedicated How Deep Is Your Love to him. Mm -hmm. Why yeah, is it changed of tune? Well, on uh, the last concert, how did we, we couldn't sing Wish You Were Here live. It was well, very hard to sing. Well, we could. Yeah, no, I don't, no, no, yeah, no, 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 finish. I don't mean that we couldn't you know, sing it properly. It was just very emotional to sing, and it was upsetting. Uh, How Deep Is Your Love wasn't so, because Wish You Were Here was, was, was written for Andy. So when we sang it on stage a couple of times, it was really hard to sing it because of the emotions involved. And it sort of upset us a lot for the rest of the mm -hmm. show, if you like. But it was just sort of upsetting to sing it. Mm. And it was even hard to do the vocals on the record, on the actual track itself, because it took us a while before we actually started singing it, because of the emotions. And How Deep Is Your Love was not especially written for Andy, but it meant that his love was very important to us. So that's why we dedicated that song, because it was a lot easier to sing. Uh, because when we were singing Wish You Were Here, all, you could sing, all we could think about was that terrible day when we found out that Andy had passed away. Andy Gibb, the youngest of the four brothers in the Bee Gees, is dead, 30 years old. The cause is unknown, but Andy Gibb was on Monday put in the hospital with strong magic smarts. The Bee Gees has been popular in an hour, and sang blant annet melodiene i filmen Saturday Night Fever. Andy was to make one more album himself and we were to make one more album and then we were to join forces. Um, but it never came to be because of what happened, so uh, it's a regret. It's one of our regrets. And, it, uh, and there are numerous regrets, you know, the things you, things you always want to say to somebody and, uh, and you don't say, and now we wish we'd said. So, you know, you have to go through all those things too, guilt, anger, you blame yourself, you blame, um, you blame show business, you blame Hollywood for what happened to Andy. Uh, but then again, you have to come to terms with the fact that we all run our lives individually the way we see fit. And Andy had a lot of problems. Mm. And, uh, and it's just the way things go, and maybe it was meant to be. Teach me to sing falsetto. Stand right up now, right now. Stand up, drop your trousers. Yeah. Anyone that level your trousers? Let's start. Let's let's jump into the deep end. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you have to stand up? Oh, no. no. <laughs> but where do they start? In the What's stomach. Under your belt. Oh, it's <laughs> Below your belt. Actually, um, it started with nights on Broadway with Elise yes. Mardin. Mm. Uh, we were producing the main course yes. album, and he wanted to know if someone could uh, scream at the end and do some ad libs. Barry said, "I'll go and do it." And then he said, "Can you do it in falsetto?" And Barry said, well, I'll have a go, and he did. And the next song we did, uh, because it sounded good, he wanted to sing the lead, which was Fanny Be Tender. He said, maybe I'll sing the lead in falsetto. Yeah. But it was something that really wasn't new to us uh, because of the stylistics, the delphonics, all those people right. were out at the time. They were doing the falsettos long before we did. 
but it was just something that we tried something new again and we loved R&B music. We loved the black R&B music. We actually used to like Frankie Valley a lot too. Yeah. And those early Four Seasons yeah. records were great. So because we discovered the falsetto, yeah. Valley, <laughs> we could do those R&B songs with a lot more emotion. Right. Yeah. And the falsetto lead, we said, wow, it's a bit stylistic, but it's great. Is Now on your brand new LP, you uh, have changed the title from your old uh, You Should Be Dancing to Decadence. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, do you think that is a way of telling that disco is superficial and a little bit decadent? Well, it was decadent when it first came out. <laughs> but it was the only dance, we would only have done this with this song because it was the only obvious dance record we ever wrote. First of all, it's done for fun. And secondly, yeah. It's a remake, not a remix, uh, with uh, all the vocals. All new vocals. Are all new. Yeah. So for, people just have to take it for what it is. We were just, uh, it was as an extra <coughs> track that we wanted yeah. to have fun with, and not really a designed sales tool for the album. And it's not to be taken seriously. No, it's, it's just to have fun uh, with. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of requests for people who wanted to do it besides ourselves. They wanted to remix the original. Mm. They wanted to do different things like that. And it was it was basically our engineer and our programmer Tim Moore and Femi, who had heard dancing in the clubs one on days off when we weren't recording. They decided to do an updated version of it and played it to us, and it was so good. Yeah. We thought it was a lot of fun. But it's there, it's great. It's, it's you know, we enjoyed it, and it's nice to hear a different version of something mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, you know, after the event. Your 30th album. Mm. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and, um, and you have different styles. Aren't you ever afraid of that people should miss the unique Bee Gees sound? Maurice? Well, we've done the unique. Uh, when we start singing, it's our sound. When we start writing songs, it's our yeah. songs, it's our music. I mean, when you, when you hear this album, I don't think you can, I don't think you, I don't think you think it's anyone else but the Bee Gees. Yeah. Mm. Um, and no matter what style it is. No matter what the style is. Mm. I think this, yeah. But this album is very much getting back to our roots. It's much uh, of the style um, of the earlier Bee Gees than the, than, uh, than the last two albums. So, uh, can I just say that I yes, think this album's for fun? <laughs> you can. Yes, <laughs> can indeed. I think this album's for fun. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, it's, not, it's, 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 it's 30 albums down the line, you know, and it's a time in our lives where we think we ought to be having fun. And we just chose the kind of music this time that, that, uh, that we like, the kind of songs that we like, the different influences of different artists. For instance, uh, um, Kiss of Life is probably influenced by the Beach Boys to some extent with the harmonies and perhaps Phil Collins, people like that. Um, with a slightly um, harder edge. With a slightly harder edge, but, but nevertheless, you know, uh, th there are certain musical influences from other artists that exist on this album. It's yeah. us just having fun this time. Not taking ourselves quite so seriously, and I think once again that reflects the title, sizes and everything. Uh, it really means two things. It means that uh, stretching ourselves uh, is one, and also yeah. in, the, in the actual. Um, uh, don't judge a book by its cover. That's it. Uh, <laughs> don't judge us based on disco or yeah, or yeah. what music might have been called yeah. twenty years ago. Uh, just oh. judge us on the listen to the music itself and try not to 
uh, be taken in by the media's perception of what we are, so, what, of what they think we are. Yeah, I also like the idea of the sizes and everything, meaning our image and how you perceive us is not necessarily yeah. so. And when you listen to the album, then you make the judgment. Mm. Yeah. Also, size is everything.